the book. Okay, that's good. When we she eat. eats. Had we ate already? When she arrived. What's the past participle of eating? Eating. Yeah. Eating. Eating. When she arrived, had we eaten already? Had it it been being cold all week? Yes. Number five is had read, I go read. Uh, had had I read I, read read is the past participle of read. Um, so how will it be? Uh, gone is the past participle, guys. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's because of you that. Only, we only have three minutes left. Yeah, it's because yeah. of that. <laughs> it's yeah. gone. No when. It's gone. Gone. <laughs> So the other one is it's the same, right? With had, past had she, past perfect. Hey, all of them are past perfect. All of them. How you just need to oh. put the right structure. Okay. Okay. Has she so past participle of C, Celia? Sorry? Past participle of C. It's bow. No. Yeah, the cover pronoun. Seen. No, seen. Seen. Yeah. It's seen. That's you seen. seen. <laughs> you guys don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm a little bit confused with the ones that are irregulars. <laughs> Wait, uh, to find them, Carlos, you can type past participle of and something, and you get the verb so that you can make progress, okay? So okay, type, perfect. Type Google past participle of B and you will get it right away. Yeah. So past participle of because <laughs> otherwise you're gonna spend all night here. Oh <laughs> why had to forget. Had he for forgot? Forgot. No. Look it up. Carlos, I know the answer. Oh my god. Know. Past participle of forget. That's it, and you will it will pop right away. Of, uh -huh. of the forgotten. Oh wow! You don't get it right away. Click on that. Let me see. There it is. Well, there it is on the second column. Forgotten. All right, there you go. <laughs> One minute, oh guys. Come on, let's <laughs> do this. <laughs> uh -huh. When have they arrived? Uh, when have they arrived? All right. Mm -hmm. uh, what number are you working? Twenty. Well, Twenty. She... Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow, you have made the most progress. Okay, we only have one minute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. How many coffees? Hey! Yeah. Hi, you finished? Yeah, yes. we finished. Oh, wow. Some groups are still working on number five. Can you believe it? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we have finished. Job. All right, okay, we're going to go back now because it's, it's time. So we're good. Let's go. Okay. okay. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Juan Francisco? <laughs> Some of you are so happy tonight. I, I'm happy. To no, we, happy. we were talking. 
Everybody uh -huh. were like, bye bye, and you'll never send that to me. Uh, yeah, no, and, and then I was waiting for everyone, and I said, hey, why is nobody coming back? Oh, because I didn't click on, <laughs> on close the group. So, yeah, technical okay, issues. Technical issues. All right, some of you finished. Some of you were struggling, right? It's okay. So that means we need, to, we need to study the irregular verbs and that's fine. Just make sure you do it, guys, because whenever you reach advanced, that's going to kill you. So make sure you study that. We need to move on anyway. If you didn't finish the exercise, finish it after class. Please, please, please. That's important for you. Okay. And number five, read the objective, Marcela. In this class, you will learn about different cult cultures around the world. Right, cultures. Cultures. Right. Cross cultural experiences. Let's watch this video. So, finally, we started Unit 5. I mean, Section 5. We'll finish on time and with good knowledge. So, we're good. Let's watch. Hi, I'm Chris Brooks. Welcome to Travel World. Have you ever traveled to a country with a completely different culture? If you have, you probably know what culture shock is. It's a feeling of confusion you get from suddenly being in a new environment. The traditions and customs may seem strange. Expectations are different. You don't know exactly what you're supposed to do. You may even be a little bit afraid of making a mistake. In time, you get used to everything. But when you get home, you often have some interesting and perhaps humorous stories to tell about your cross-cultural experiences. Today, we're going to Latin America to meet some people who've traveled abroad and hear about their experiences crossing cultures. First, let's go to Brazil. Ah, yes, Rio de Janeiro. Enjoying a spectacular view of Sugarloaf Mountain is our lucky reporter, Fatima Nolan. Hi, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Rio de Janeiro. Like everywhere else in the world, people here like to travel abroad and have some interesting stories to tell. Let's talk with some of them. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Camilla and I was born in Stockholm, Sweden, but I moved to Rio when I was four and I've lived here ever since. Two years ago I went to Sweden and I lived there for a year. What did you notice that was different? Well, the first thing that I noticed when I got to Sweden was how people greet each other. It was completely different because here in Brazil we kiss on the cheek and they shake hands. So I went to kiss like and they, oh my goodness, what's going on? And they felt like you're invading my space or something like that. It was strange. This is Fatima Nolan from Rio de Janeiro. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Fatima. Now, let's cross the South American continent to Lima, Peru, where our reporter Denise Oregui is standing by. Denise? Thanks, Chris. We're here at the beautiful Plaza de Armas. This is a favorite spot for tourists and the people of Lima. Let's talk to some people here about their cross-cultural experiences. Hey, what's your name and where are you from? My name's Andrew and I'm from the United States. Have you noticed any difference in the way people do things here in Peru? Yeah, one thing that I've really noticed is the public transportation system is really different. Because here, the bus system is private. And so there's all these people trying to get you on their bus because the way they make money is by getting as many people as possible to get on their bus. So the whole time they're yelling, get on my bus, get on my bus. And sometimes it's not the bus that you want to be getting on. This is Denise Arregui here in Lima, Peru. Back to you, Chris. Thank you, Denise. Now reporter Hillary Garcia is standing by in Mexico, our final destination for today. What do you have for us, Hillary? 
Thanks, Chris. I'm here in beautiful Tepoztlan, Mexico, a town that both Mexican and foreign tourists like to visit. Let's talk with a few of them about their cross-cultural experiences. Hi, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Delfino Valdez, and I was born in Reynosa, Mexico, and now I live in the United States. Tell us about your cross-cultural experience. I am married to an American woman, and she was making me lunch one day, and she brought me a soup and a sandwich. Once I was done with it, I said, okay, honey, where's the rest of it? And she said, that was it. Well, it is customary in my culture to have a huge meal in the middle of the day, with the beans, the rice, the meat. So needless to say, I was very surprised. This is Hillary Garcia in Tepoztlan, Mexico. Back to you, Chris. Until next time, this is Chris Brooks for Travel World, bidding you bon voyage. Get on the bus, centro, 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 right? Well, that, it seems like that happens in other parts of the world, not only in El Salvador. I had a question. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Tell me. It, one, the I don't know. The guy said uh, an expression that I I looking for that, but I didn't catch um, it. I didn't catch it. Yes. They he said buses are miss private. What does it mean? Yeah, and it's a word. It's a verb. Miss private. No, no, he said that the public, trans well, that the buses and transportation were private. So it's not public like in our place, uh, like in our country, right? It's not public transportation, but it's private. It's private. Mm -hmm. Buses uh, are private. I think that's what he heard. Or this I, I heard that he used buses are miss private. Miss Private. Um, all right. I will go back to the video and see what he said. But yeah, that's I heard they were private. That's it, not Miss. But I will check. I know okay, what Mina okay. did is. I remember. Anyway, let's continue. We have to... By the way, guys, um, I forgot. On Saturday, I was going to send you a song, the lyrics to a song. So I would like us to listen to it. All right, so that we can do something different. I'm going to send it to you, but what I want you to do is to either print it, if you have a printer, or write it down on your notebook. It's not long. The lyrics is very short. So can you do that for me, please? I will send it to you after class. So we can listen to a song tomorrow that is containing relative causes. Can we do that? Sure. Okay. Yes. Let's watch this video and see how relative clauses are being used. And I will check for you, Fatima. Okay. Hi, everyone. By the end of this, make sure you take notes. Please, please, please get your notebooks out. Let's take notes. I would like to see everybody taking notes. Countries. You'll learn how to use noun phrases to do this. So let's get started by me asking you a few questions, which you should be able to answer with no problems at all by the end of this class. When traveling to another country, would you be nervous about being far away from your family? Would you feel insecure about traveling alone? Would you be enthusiastic about making new friends? By the end of this class, you'll be able to use noun phrases which contain relative clauses in order to express your ideas when it comes to traveling. So let me present some structure at this particular moment. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make sense of these noun phrases which contain relative clauses. Uh, first, we'll start talking a little bit about how we use this as a subject. Uh, then we'll move into the object, probably the object. I'll separate this into a different lecture. So uh, in order to form this kind of um, expressions, first we're going to have a subject. So in this case, this subject becomes one thing. Uh, then this is followed by a relative clause, I really miss. And then we're going to have the uh, verb to be. Uh, in this case, as you can see, it's the verb to be is. And then that's followed by 
um, an object or a phrase, if you will. So let's write that specific sentence down, and then we're going to try to make sense of it, as I mentioned. So let me do that at this point. Okay. All right. So as I mentioned, uh, one thing, sorry, one thing becomes the subject of the sentence. I've I've colored that in green, so we can uh, see the difference between what's a verb and what's a what's a uh, what's a subject, what's a relative clause, what's a verb, and what's the object of this particular idea. Then this is followed by the relative clause. I, I colored this in blue so you can see what, what I'm referring to as a relative clause. And then the verb to be. Now the verb to be needs to match with the subject, if you will. So if the subject uh, were to be plural, then this should change to are. Um, and then it's followed by the object of the sentence. So in this case, my mom's cooking is the object of the sentence. What we're going to do right now is we're going to include a lot of uh, relative clauses uh, so that you can see that uh, this topic could it can become a little bit confusing. But if we understand uh, this structure, it, it shouldn't be difficult to complete. So let me include um, lots of relative clauses. All right. And... What we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of it, but we're going to try to uh, make different sentences with them. All right. So um, I mentioned one thing. Um, you could you could express this idea by saying something, right? Uh, you could also say two people, or you can say two things, or you can say uh, two things that I miss would be, and then you mention what those things are. Um, but um, let's try to make sense of it here. Um, so one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So I've included uh, a few relative clauses. And let me get you to answer this by me asking you the question. So what would you be nervous about when traveling to another country? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? What would you be curious about? What would you be enthusiastic about? What would you be fascinated by? Um, let's say that we choose the country, uh, maybe France, all right? So France seems like a very touristic place. And I think that a lot of people would like to travel to this particular country. So let's do that second one. One thing I'd be nervous about is, all right, that's going to follow the bird to be. And maybe for me is getting lost, all right? Uh, let me try to keep the format a little bit because I want you to notice that we have one thing is the noun, uh, the relative clauses I'll be nervous about. Then this is followed by the verb to be. And then this will be followed by the object of the sentence. Okay, so for me, one thing I'd really be nervous about, or one thing I'd be nervous about, is getting lost. One thing I'd be anxious about is getting to know this new city. One thing I'd be comfortable with is the weather. One thing I'd be curious about is learning about the country's culture. One thing I'd be enthusiastic about is learning the new language. One thing I'd be fascinated by is getting to know the history behind the architecture in that particular city. And so you get the idea. Um, so if we follow this pattern, subject plus relative clause plus verb to be plus the object, then we shouldn't uh, have any difficulties expressing these ideas. Uh, just one last thing that I would like to mention that if I change the subject to plural, okay, I will need to change the verb to be and I will also need to change the object because both things need to be plural. They need to match with whatever the subject is. So for example, two things I really miss are my mom's cooking in my room at home. Okay, that's just to give you an example. And if, if the subject changes to something plural, then you will need to do the same for uh, the rest. So what I would like for you to do now is to practice this concept, but now answer this in your own way. So what would you be nervous about? What would you be anxious about? What would you be comfortable with? And try to give as many responses as you possibly can. Try to write these ideas down as this will help you learn this concept. 
Okay. Um, is this part clear how you have to write them? I still don't write. Sorry. Here, guys, you're going to write two things or one thing, okay? One thing I'd be nervous about is, and if you're going to use a verb, the verb has to be in the ing form, all right? You can use ing if it's a verb, and if it's a noun, you simply say uh, the culture, for example, or a verb. If you want to use a verb, it has to be in the ing form. So you would say one thing I'd be nervous about is uh, being robbed. So if you decide to use a verb, it has to be an ing. Otherwise, you can use a noun. All right, since uh, we, yeah, we have to write some examples. I will give you five minutes and let's try to write as many as we can, okay? With these, so say one thing or you can say two things, but you have to obviously change this is for are, okay? In the I case you're using a, sorry. Mm -hmm. In case you're using plural, the first uh, thing that is going after the verb is with ing, but the second one could be just a noun or a verb, not in, with ing? <laughs> no, both of them would have to be with ing. Both, okay. Yes, if you Thank decide you. to put two ing or two nouns or one verb and a noun. But the thing is okay. that the gerund form, guys, makes the verb or it turns it into a noun. That's why you have to use ing. Okay, so let's try to write some examples. I'll give you five minutes. We don't have much time, so let's do this quickly, all right? Take a screenshot of this and let's write some examples. Three or four examples, that would be fine. Here we go. Let me see, I'll recreate this. So accept the invitation, please. I think okay. Okay, uh, one thing I will be nervous about is to fail my quiz or to fail a quiz. Yeah. Mm, and you? You will be afraid about if failing, not to uh, ah, if failing. failing a, a quiz. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you guys? In my case about travel, one thing I'd be anxious, anxious, how do you say? Anxious, yeah. Anxious about anxious. it, losing the fl my flight. Yeah, very good. Something like that, sorry. <laughs> I was no, they're just like a meeting. Yeah. So, and um, one thing I will really miss is going to the beach with my friends mm, okay yeah and, ha and really having a picnic on the beach yeah <laughs> all right the okay. second one okay, uh, one thing uh juan francisco you start okay one thing i'd be nervous about is speaking english with a native american mm -hmm. I was thinking in the same one because <laughs> I think if I am in another country, really, no. One thing I'd be nervous about is um, the people can't understand me. <laughs> if the people can, <laughs> okay. Uh, in me that too. case, Marcel, I would be I would be nervous about people not understanding me. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, with mm -hmm. ing. Not understanding. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. the person. I think I have entry so, social entry or something like that, but to be honest, I can. So it's that basically. 
my son and my bed. Your bed? Your bed? Yes. <laughs> okay. You can carry it. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> Get in, in, an, in a, an airplane. Ah, okay. Bye. Josie, are you there? Yeah, tell me. The last one is it's correct. I fascinated by, or it could be I'd be fascinated by. Yeah, you can say both depending on the time you want to express it. I, I can omit the B. No, no, no. In the last one. I'm fascinated, I'm fascinated. Yeah, you can omit, no, you're, you don't omit it. You just change the, the the conjugation because I am is still the verb be. I would be is still the same verb be. So you don't omit it. I, well, I say I will be fascinated. It's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And if I say I will fascinate him? No, it's not possible. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, here we are. So, Fatima, uh, the video said public system is private. Public system is private. But I said it quickly. Is private. Mm -hmm. public, the public okay. system is private. Okay, thanks. So he didn't say is, he said system, the whole word. <laughs> Okay, okay, I have to go guys, it's late, but we did a lot tonight. So I'll send you that lyric, print it or write it down and write it. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Bye. have a nice day. Thank you, you're so Bye. 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 B